Hey guys, Daily Tech here, and today we're not going to be doing any kind of tutorial or any kind of game demo. Today I'll just be talking about RiftCat and its new version 1.2 update that just got released earlier this week. Now for those of you who are not familiar with RiftCat or have never had a chance to use it yet, I'll give a bit of an overview of it and how to use it. Then I'll be getting into some of the new features that were just added in that update and explaining how it'll benefit your VR experience. Oh, and did I forget to mention I will be giving away not one, not two, but ten license keys for RiftCat? Now if you've not already subscribed to my channel, you can go ahead and click that subscribe button now so you don't miss any videos down the road or any more of these giveaways. So what is RiftCat? RiftCat's a program that's developed by a small group of developers in Poland that'll allow you to play VR games from Steam VR and the Oculus Store on your mobile phone so you can use it in a small VR headset. Also, this does of course work for the Gear VR and also the new Google Daydream headset too. Now I can assure you this program is 100% legal and in fact it actually helps out the VR community too. This program is totally free to use for 10 minutes at a time, so if you do want to play a little bit longer, you will need a full license key to do that. This is so that you can test out the full program in any Steam VR or Oculus Store game, and make sure it works without any kind of problems before you buy. Now as it stands right now, you will need to make sure you get a game that has just controller support and not the motion controller support, but in 2017, there's a lot of new motion controllers that are coming up for mobile VR, so keep your eyes peeled for those because I think there's going to be a whole ton hit in the market this year. And once you get your hands on one of those, you'll be able to play any of the HTC Vive games. Now I myself, I use PlayStation 3 Move controllers to get a full 360 tracking with motion controllers. Now if you want to check out how I did that, I got a link in the top right of your screen now showing a full tutorial on setting that up. So let's take a look at how the RiftCat software works and we'll give it a quick preview to see it working. You'll need to download the PC server software from RiftCat's website which I have in the description below. Then you'll need to download and install the RiftCat client app on your mobile phone from the Google Play Store. For those of you using the Gear VR and want to take advantage of the built-in sensors for better tracking, you'll need to download the Gear VR version of the client app from Sideload VR. I also have a video for how that's installed in the top right of your screen too. Once both of those are installed, make sure you have your phone connected to the same network as your PC. Or you can also have your phone tethered directly to the PC for better performance. Now, we'll open up the app on the PC, have it automatically find the phone, and once it finds the phone, we'll confirm that it's the right one and we're all set. From here, you can just adjust some of the video settings for better performance or quality, and then click on Play Steam VR Games. Notice how Steam VR thinks I have a VR headset connected? Yeah, it's really my Gear VR. You'll see that as I move my phone around, you can see the mirror window on my computer moving around, showing you that it's working just fine. Now how cool is that? RiftCat has a great help center that'll give you all kinds of guides and troubleshooting tips to make sure you get yourself up and running. I've also put a link to this in the description below if you want to find out more. So if you have a somewhat recent smartphone and you want to try out VR, there really is no reason to not try this out. Also, if you're one of the 5 million people that got the Gear VR last year and you haven't tried this out yet, well shame on you because you've been really missing out. Now in regards to the update that I spoke about earlier, it was actually released late last week but the Gear VR version wasn't released till earlier this week. And this update has brought a lot of improvements right up and down the board, including jitter fix for the Gear VR better support for the Pixel phones. Also, if your phone supports it, the H.265 encoding, better known as HEVC. Now, all of this was done while decreasing latency. This means you can now turn the bitrate down to get better streaming over Wi-Fi and get fewer artifacts while keeping the video quality nice and high. It's really just a win-win update without any kind of compromise. Now there are fallback features as well, so you can revert back to legacy type of encoding. Now this is just in case your phone runs into any kind of issues that weren't there before and you want to go back. Now the cool thing is, all the settings from the standard app are going to translate over into the Gear VR version since you can't change the settings in that app. So if you have the Gear, make sure you got both apps installed so you can adjust the settings and test them out for yourself. 
Now I've read many reports already of people saying that this has made the game go from unplayable to playable, and others just saying it's been giving you really good performance increases. I guess unfortunately and fortunately at the same time, mine always ran pretty well, so my performance increases were only kind of minimal, but they were still there and definitely noticeable. For me personally, I just turned my bitrate down a little bit so that I get no more artifacting at all and my video quality stayed way up. Now the really cool and exciting part is, is that the Riftcat developers say they've got plans in the future for further increasing performance. However, when we do a network stream, we'll probably never quite get there, but we'll at least get really close. Now speaking of that, I just recently had an opportunity to try out an HTC Vive, so I decided to do a little shootout video between my Gear VR and PlayStation Move setup versus the HTC Vive. And to my surprise, it wasn't as much of a blowout for the HTC Vive as I thought it was going to be. So be sure to tune in for that when I do a 14 point shootout and see who's crowned as victor. And some of the results may surprise you. Now to help spread the word of this game changing software and to continue to grow the VR community, I'll be giving out 10 free Riftcat licenses over the next 10 weeks to my viewers. This week, all you need to do is give a thumbs up to the video, then click on the links to share to Facebook or Twitter. And be absolutely sure you hashtag it with DT Riftcat Giveaway. And then I'll randomly pick a winner next week and announce it during my next Tuesday's giveaway video. In the meantime, feel free to browse my channel for more great content, including gameplay videos, tutorials, reviews, and more. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.